Today I'm going to be talking about why the richest people in the world, the richer people, really do not try and flex their money on social media like some of the younger generation. Uh, I think the point of this video is to really educate you all on financial sense, uh, the pros and cons of uh, flexing, and uh, potentially some uh, more factors to consider if and when you all get rich and uh, have to decide whether or not to show it off on social media or the internet. So if you don't know, you probably should know by now, if you go on to YouTube, Instagram for many years now, there's a lot of these young kids who grew up low, low income or mid income in uh, developed countries, found a large social media following and made a ton of money. And um, some of these kids, not all of them, you know, you have some fairly, fairly humble ones. I mean, Mr. Beast is one actually, I mean, you would think like he's pretty flashy, right? But that's only for his YouTube videos. Like it's never really personally ascribed him. Um, but there's a lot of others um, out there who uh, love to flex their money and what they have. Uh, Ricegum is one individual, Logan Paul, Jake Paul. And so you have a lot of these young uh, YouTubers who spend a lot of money on showing how uh, how uh, rich they are. Some of them will buy or rent fancy apartments and houses. Others will rent Lamborghinis. Um, others will buy expensive clothes. And so you get this perception that they're really rich. They make a lot of money off YouTube. And maybe this is true. Um, on the flip side, you have some people who decide to be very frugal about it or humble about it despite how much they make. I would say Matt Pat from Film Theorist could be one example. Um, PewDiePie, you never really see flexing how much money he makes with material things even though he makes an excessive amount on YouTube, apparently millions every year. Um, and so you have this uh, smorgasbord of different uh, people, although the ones who are very flashy with it get a lot of the attention. You even have a more older generation of kind of uh, uh, baby boomers, uh, or at least, you know, that older millennial generation, the Ty Lopez's, the Grant Cardone's, uh, people like that who are also kind of business gurus who are, you know, flexing their stuff. Some of them, uh, revealing that they were really just renting it others who actually own it and they do show this off to to make money uh dean grazios graziosi is uh, one who's kind of like in the middle like he's humble with it but he knows it gets him views and attention which converts to you know selling stuff on his with his uh courses and stuff so he kind of does it in a humble way by showing quick glimpses of his cars and the people he's he's hung around uh so What's the right move here? You even have uh, people like Bill Gates, Warren Buffett, you know, these people who make a thousand times more than any of these YouTubers who have such excessive amounts of wealth based off their, the companies that they've invested in, owned, managed. And, uh, you know, you have a wide variety there. Sure, they're not showing it off on social media, but some of them are somewhat blatant with their wealth. I mean, you have Bill Gates lives in a giant mansion and uh, Steve Ballmer, you know, bought a sports team. I think he owns a incredibly large yacht as well. And many of his other colleagues do as well from Microsoft. And so you have this spread of wealth and you also have a lot of these um, personal finance hedge fund managers who just kind of keep very secret. There's like no indication that they're rich, but they're they're there, you know, they could, they could buy 10 yachts, um, but you don't see them on social media showing it off. And so it may seem like there's a lot of flashiness, but uh, when you look behind the surface, um, a lot of these people um, who are flashy are maybe in the minority, but because of how flashy they are on the internet, it makes them seem more abundant and more frequent. So you may assume that they're there more often. Um, there's a personal finance book that some people call the Bible of personal finance. It's called The Millionaire Next Door, which was a very thorough, long study of uh, the millionaires of uh, the U.S. 
and I think they studied like 10,000 millionaires, tracked them, talked to them and stuff like that. And they found some very uh, crazy stuff, which is that most millionaires live below their means. They live uh, modest jobs with modest costs of living and modest lifestyles. Um, and only until later in life do they really start to spend. But even then, it's, it's very thoughtful spending. And so you might get this, you know, you might get, be shocked as I was when I heard this. And it turns out that the, when they looked into it, the portion that were very flashy with their, their uh, spending with the cars and the, the mansions and stuff, they were a very, very small percentage of them. And usually ones who got their money very quickly and uh, spent it very quickly. Um, but most of these millionaires, what they did was they basically lived below their means and that allowed them to save and compound their money over the years and survive off that excessive amount uh, when they retired or choose to spend it without any trouble. Uh, so, you know, that's that's a very interesting thing, you know. It's like, okay, that's a completely different way of looking at it. And of course, you know, if you ever, everyone wants to spend excessively, but um, that's really more of a multi-millionaire thing where you just have so much money, you can do that. Um, so just keep that in mind. If you spend it quickly, you can lose it quickly. Um, and so which is the right approach? I think a lot of the old money, you know, the money that was made back in the olden days, uh, who are very familiar with how uh, excessive wealth can have side effects, they have often adopted approaches to hide their wealth. Not always, you know, it, it's a case by case situation. But, you know, a lot of the younger generations, especially a lot of these YouTubers, they don't have that reference point. So they're not really aware of the side effects or, or potential bad parts of doing this. Um, so what are some of these bad parts? Now, I'm not an expert. You know, I don't have this uh, old money family to, to, to reveal this. But from my studies of biographies and history and stuff like that, I think two of them are... Uh, two potentials are one gold diggers and then the bigger one is any form of uh, kidnapping extortion uh, that may happen from it um, now you might say well that's unlikely that no one does that right well you'd be wrong um, there's a whole movie made on it actually it was, it was called all the money in the world and it was basically the story it wasn't the most accurate story I think it was fairly accurate but often dramatized and kind of misses out on some of the the juicier parts of the story but it was basically about how one of the richest people in the entire world um, basically was uh, extorted for millions upon millions of dollars because his uh, grandson was kidnapped and uh, it, it was horrific on many accounts uh, obviously very covered in the press um, he refused to pay because then it would just kind of, um, at least in his words, open it up for dozens of other grandchildren to be exposed to this. And, uh, you know, he was kind of demonstrating that he wasn't willing to just keep doing this. Also, he was very stingy with his money, which is how he made his money. So, you know, at first he would only give $100,000, even though he made billions. Um so that was just him though, and you know, obviously if it was a Bill Gates who's maybe more kind-hearted or Richard Branson, it'd be a different situation. And uh, could it happen again? Why hasn't it happened again? Maybe, you know, the police have gotten more sophisticated, modern tech, or maybe uh, just things have happened differently or no one's thought of it. But these are the dangers of uh, showing your money off. And there's probably other reasons why, you know, it definitely attracts people who only care about your money, whether that's friends or, or so forth. And of course, it can attract a lot of jealous or envious people. You know, I don't know exactly why, but those are the cons. What are some of the pros? Well, for a lot of young men, they do it because it works in attracting women. Sure, yeah, it does attract a lot of these uh, gold digging women, but, you know, it also attracts um, women that maybe aren't completely gold diggers, but that catches their eye and gets their, their foot in the door. Um, also, you know, it's just a natural instinct of a lot of young men. They, they do it from a mating perspective to kind of show off 
uh, and boost their own reputation. Um, and so, you know, there's pros and cons, you know, studying the uh, career of some of these people who have been able to do it, um, sometimes it leads to success, sometimes it leads to failure. You never really know because they're only showing the social media highlights of their life. You know, maybe behind the scenes, it's caused a lot of angst. Um, a lot of people envying them, tearing them down, getting jealous, or calling them out as frauds. Those are common things. Is it worth it? Sometimes it is, you know. Sometimes these people just, at least they claim, they would just brush it off as haters, and it's all good. Other times, you know, people see through it. Maybe they're not as rich as they claim, or they are, and then, you know, that's their own thing. So obviously there's all these different um, permutations of this in the world. And I just think it's a very inter interesting discussion on which way is right. Do you hide your wealth? Do you show it? Do you do something in between? Um, and, you know, you have all this history that potentially could support it. You have stuff like Robert Greene, who's written these big books about the uh, dangers of history of certain behaviors, you know. And things like showing showing off um, too much so that your superiors get jealous, and that you know he pointed to this uh, French sto French monarchy uh, that happened in the 1800s where it, exactly that happened, and uh, you know the the person through this enormous party that uh, snubbed the king without intentionally snubbing the king. And the king got kind of jealous about that and had him exiled. So, of course, we, we don't live in a French monarch now where it's, you know, those crazy uh, primitive things can happen. But um, maybe they may come at you in different ways. Does that mean you get very anxious and worried about this? And, you know, you go, cra you go crazy with it and you hide your wealth? Probably not. I mean... Um, I think the jury is still out, but a great way is to just study uh, people living their life now and seeing how they progress through it. Um, I think if you study people like Richard Branson, who are very clearly rich and their children are as well, um, it's hard to really say. I know Warren Buffett, he has a bodyguard with him at all times um, and like a whole team that he hires. So it just really depends. Um, and, uh, you know, let me know your thoughts. Do you have any stories of uh, millionaires or billionaires that you know? And uh, what are your thoughts on it? You know, there's a lot of hearsay and, you know, uh, he said, she said opinions. But do you have, uh, is there any clear facts about the pros and cons? You know, there's a lot of, especially in China, there's a lot of old money who has a lot of money. And so there's a lot of cultural uh dynamics at play. Um, I was uh, watching an interview by the guy who wrote the Crazy Rich Asian series and apparently he had uh, connections or I guess he knew people who knew people who uh, was uh, part of these old rich uh, Chinese which is what spurred him to write the book but also uh, inspired him to write a lot of the stories and he said a lot of the old money knew a lot of things that the new money didn't and, you know, it caused them to, them to do things in a different way, such as, you know, be very, uh, sure, they're oftentimes very excessive and they'll buy ridiculous things that no one needs for excessive amounts. But at the same time, they're also very smart about hiding their money, not letting others know. And so I wanted to learn more about that, but that's all he said about that until he moved on to another part of the interview. So what are those things? Obviously, everyone has opinions on this. You know, even poor people have opinions. Oh, you should hide your money. You shouldn't. But what are the true implications? Who knows who doesn't? If you have a story or someone who's actually gone through this and a, a clear, clear result, let me know. Was it a middle class guy who was fairly rich for his area and he showed off his money too much and it ended in a bad way? Or was it someone who lived a great life from beginning to end and had no trouble even though he flaunted his wealth a lot? Maybe that's a Dan Bilzerian, or maybe that's not. I know that Dan is having some problems now because I hear um, it's been exposed that he has been renting his mansion. Does that necessarily mean that uh, he's a fraud? Not exactly. Maybe it's more affordable to rent your mansion and just more economical. Who knows?